Hi, Exec Online listeners. HR leaders are on the front line of their organizations, helping employees worldwide navigate today's health and economic crisis. This is not a simple task, and nearly every functional facet of HR is being put to the test. To help overcome these new challenges, Exec Online brings you Stories from the HR Frontline, a timely and relevant series spotlighting HR leaders around the globe sharing their personal experiences of resilience, leadership, and response to this crisis. Exec Online's SVP of Client Solutions, Adam Brinegar, talks with Missy Hallett. Missy is the Vice President of Global Talent Capability and Diversity at the global gaming powerhouse Aristocrat Technologies and shares her story about moving their workforce virtually, addressing a delicate furlough strategy while still engaging employees, and emphasizing how learning is a critical piece in retaining their talent to ensure leaders are ready for the future. Most importantly, Missy affirms that Aristocrat is an employee-centric organization and continues to support and care about their people. And hi, everyone. Uh, This is uh, Adam Brinegar at Exec Online, and I'm here with Missy uh, to talk about, um, you know, her experience uh, at Aristocrat, you you know, leading, uh, you know, the team there. So I want to just kind of start, um, Missy, kind of broadly, you know, I I, I think you're working from home like like everyone else, it looks like, just kind of looking at the background there. You know, so how are you doing? How, How are you doing so far? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking as well as could be expected based on everyone working from home. And and I can certainly appreciate um, people that are are more introverted, maybe feel a little bit more comfortable being at home and actually enjoy it. Me being on the other end of the spectrum, very extroverted, staying at home to me, I feel very claustrophobic at times. And so I've been looking for creative ways to get out and about without being out and about, right? So um, a couple of things I've done most recently for some of my team members, I've just been doing that ding dong door ditch where I'll bake cookies or I'll drop off a bottle of wine, maybe a package of toilet paper, ring the doorbell, jump back in my car. I just have to find something to do to get out and about um, without exposing myself or others. So it's been um, but it's been it's been a challenge working from home, but it's also been um, a huge learning experience. So tell us a little bit about the journey you've been on um, at at Aristocrat. You know, I think in some respects we had somewhat of an advantage given that being such a global company and we have team members um, and business in Macau. And so we really were feeling the impacts early on by having people that were already in kind of a shelter in place mode and we were they were being quarantined and and us really having to start to think through our business and how it was changing already um, in that market. And so it gave us a little bit of insights on, OK, we've got to start to prep for this. And in in response to that, we started to form a crisis team, our communication team got together, we started getting things, you know, support for employees. And so we almost got kind of this trial run practice as we had a few employees there. And then as it started to build up and build up, we were able just to scale that more on a global level. So in some respects, a little bit of a blessing in disguise. Yeah, and 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 so as you guys started like to, um, uh, you know, so you had that, that, that head start, um, you know, what were what were some of the challenges that you had, you know, as you were trying to to kind of move the and in my my understanding is you moved, you know, most of the business, you know, and, and you know, virtual pretty quickly. But, you know, maybe kind of talk us through like what that looked like and what, what were some of the obstacles and challenges that, that you had as you did that? Yeah, I think, you know, we um, thankfully about 80 percent of our workforce does have the capability to physically work from home. We just have that capability via Zoom. and and again, being global, we all had Zoom already, being in different time zones, we're used to working in that environment. And so that part wasn't actually the hard part. The harder part were for the people that um, were working in jobs that were more, you know, needed to be face to face with our customers, uh, needed to be in the office, whether you're um, building a slot machine and you need that physical um, apparatus in order to be working on that. And so some of our challenges were how are we going to take that slot machine and get it to someone's house and and right. And, and some of those logistical pieces, um, ensuring everyone had a laptop, ensuring all of that. And and our IT department just worked countless hours and, and over time to do that. But we had actually gone to a work from home prior to um, the governor in Nevada actually putting up the stay at home in place. And so um, being more proactive to say, this is what it's looking like where we're heading. We wanted to protect our employees. We wanted our employees to be safe. 
And so we were being very proactive in that space. So we weren't having some of the issues some of the other companies were having with, you know, having access or Zoom or having enough laptops or those types of things. We actually were pretty blessed and fortunate in that in that arena. And, and you attribute a lot of that to just that heads up you got from China and just sort of seeing like what was kind of going on on the ground there and kind of formulating a response, you know, in that part of the world. Yeah. You know, I attribute to that. I also attribute to we have some really forward thinking leaders and they're always wearing the people first hat. So, you know, how do we really make sure we're coming at from a people first perspective? And if we do need to face being a work from home, do, do our employees have what they need? And are we supported in that in that way? So that balance of having really strong leaders looking into the future. We had a little bit of a glimpse from Macau and then being very employee centric. We were able to to be a little bit ahead of the curve in that in that space. Yeah, and, and as you and so as, as this has gone on, and, and you're sort of you, you know, and I, I don't know what week it is for you, but you know, probably week six or seven, you know, kind of coming on. How are things changed for 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 um, you in terms of either um, what you're seeing, you know, as, as sort of the bigger challenges with a kind of a fully almost fully eighty percent, you know, kind of fully. Um, you know, remote workforce and, and, you know, have you had to evolve your policies and procedures, you know, over time or, you know, has it been relatively smooth or what's what's your experience been? Transitions are hard, just period, for anyone change. And so when you're transitioning that many people to a work from home, it, it's just the nuances of your dog barking in the background or your kids running, you know, in the background or trying to find a quiet space to you know, have your Zoom meetings and connect with people. And and for some that, you know, got up to speed really quickly, for others, that was a little bit more of a challenge. And so I think for us, it was about making sure we had the right resources for employees from our work from, from home kind of mentality. And this is what you need to do. And as leaders, making sure we were over communicating, over connecting with people and really focusing on that that there's that isolation piece, there's that I can't, you know, escape from here. I'm, and, and just feeling like we really needed people to feel supported in that. So we got so creative that we were having like virtual lunch meetings. Um, there's now virtual happy hours that are happening. There's, you know, take your coworker to work, which is really right in the next room. And so you've, we've been able to like share, you know, more personal stories. We've got to meet kids and families. We've got to meet dogs. We've got to meet cats. We've got to meet, all sorts of family members that we normally wouldn't engage with. And that's really been the silver lining about getting to know your people so well that now we have a better appreciation of how to support, et cetera. So it's been, um, while the journey has been interesting, I think we're starting to settle in, and which is good. I mean, I think people are starting to adapt and we're really able to pivot and really focus on our business. Have you had a chance to, you know, I mean, you know, the, Everyone's been in reactive mode for a while. You know, you guys got a little bit of the, the, the China indication, so you can be a little bit more proactive. Have, have you guys started to, to think about, you know, longer term, you know, in terms of, you know, what, what is this going to mean for remote work at, at, a, at Aristocrat? Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, again, like a lot of our our, our um, listeners in HR, you know, I think a lot of people are starting to think about the proactive, you know, trying to think beyond just sort of mm -hmm. the immediate need at this point, but, but what, what, what have you guys started to think about and what are, what are some of the, the, the challenges that you know, you've had as you kind of scenario plan? I think it's you know, through two lenses. One is the people lens, right? How do we keep our people safe when we transition back into a more physical yep. environment? And do we have the flexibility and capabilities to have people working from home? We'd had some work from home guidelines prior to, but it was really manager dependent, leader dependent. And I really think that now it's given leaders the confidence that we can continue to contribute and the business can continue to move forward. And in fact, sometimes even more nimbly and more quickly than before. And there is no, oh, that person can't join the meeting. No, we know you are at home. We know where you are, right? They should be able to join. And so it's getting people together has been a lot, it's been more efficient and sometimes. And so I think as we think about what happens next, it's, how do we transition back into a work, physical work environment? What can, what are the things that we really loved about retaining having people working remotely and that flexibility and some of that work life integration is better. And as a leader, you have confidence that I can manage and lead a, a, a remote work team. And in that respect, I think we're going to have a lot of um, really good things come out of this. 
Um, but that's those are the types of things we're thinking about coming back. You know, thinking about our customers, how can we support um, and our community? What can we be doing more broadly that has a bigger impact than just aristocrat? From um, looking at, at well-being initiatives that support our employees, but also their their spouses, their partners, their family members that may have been impacted like this in a in maybe a greater degree than we have. What can we be doing to help support and add value? So putting a lot of um, programs and support pieces in place for our employees to make sure that they have access to the things that they might be either addressing or, or, or finding challenging, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, fitness, mental health, whether it's, you know, wanting to continue on that learning journey. How can we best support the entire employee and really the broader family and the broader community? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I mean, they, like each employee is experiencing this in very individualized ways and how mm -hmm. we can actually support, you know, those unique employee experiences, you know, can really, mm -hmm. really, really make a difference. I, I really love that point. But how do you mm -hmm. think about learning and sort of how learning kind of fits into this virtual environment? I think we're at this really great tipping point for learning because online learning has been gaining traction, you know, as over the years. And I've been really obviously excited about Exec Online for executive development. And that's been something that has been, you know, we can do it globally, which has been fantastic. We can have cohorts all over all over the globe be participating and, and being engaged. But it's really about how can we then um, have just in time learning for what our leaders may be facing. And I think back to, you know, I, I was a leader during the financial crisis in the U.S., um, 2008, 2009, and, and had the opportunity to lead through something like that where you're facing rifts, you're facing layoffs, you're facing, you know, things that are hard, difficult conversations and communication. And then I look at, you know, the average age of our leaders is a lot of them weren't leading at that point in time. They may have gone through it or been part of the workforce, but maybe not leading. And so then you think, what are the skills and capabilities that our leaders need to lead and manage through crisis? And I've been so pleasantly surprised that a lot of our learning partners have come up with very and quickly pivoted to offer resources in that area to how do you lead and manage through a crisis through COVID? What can you be doing? And it's in oh my, I mean, the next day you'll have a video or a webinar, you'll have a white paper, you'll have a podcast, or you'll have some resource that you can instantly get in the hands of your leaders to instantly make a difference. And that kind of instant which you know we're so used to everything's instant now and um, the learning is is really fantastic and and we can pivot we were headed down a path and then you know mid-february came and and all of a sudden we're thinking okay what can we look and and what how can we pivot and now our pivoting has been more on the side of around well-being and how can we support physically and mentally and financially emotionally and and then the learning will pivot back right to things about the development and, and, and looking at digital disruption and what can we be doing to now become more customer centric in a new environment where we may be needing to social distance. So what does that look like for our customers? What does that look like for our leaders? Yeah, I think that's that's a really great um, point about just the fact that a lot of our leaders, you know, they, they didn't necessarily see the, the last, you know, economic downturn. So they're, they're, they need the resources to do that. Well, it also, even if you were there, it looks a little different, you know, than, than it does now. And I think one thing, um, um, you know, that, I, that, that's, that seems very different. And I think, um, I, so I, so I think at Aristocrat, you guys are leveraging furloughs. Am I, am I right, um, about that as you sort of deal with that kind of economic, you know, kind of headwind as well. And, and so one thing that really curious about is I don't think a lot of our client base actually is very familiar with furloughs like you know I think even those who were managing during the economic recession it was mostly you know reductions in force and then you know you were kind of dealing with that rather than this sort of effort to kind of like let's you know save the employee base you know and find other places to kind of cut costs what, what have you learned about you know fur, furloughs and you know how do you keep people engaged during furloughs and and you know I think people are really curious as, as they're sort of coming up with their own furlough strategies like what to expect you know as, as they think about managing through a furlough sure. you know we're embarking on it our, our first um, furloughs um, people have been notified our company notified um, all 4,000 of our employees that are going to be impacted in one way or another um, last week and so we did that really intentionally face to face and so that was a heavy lift on our people mm -hmm. and culture team because we weren't just going to send out a blanket email and we weren't just going to notify people that way we wanted that personal face-to-face -face conversation 
so that was that that was I think first and foremost um, really important as we set the stage into the furlough so people had a good understanding of what it is. The other thing I thought was interesting, um, some of our people and culture team members didn't know, even know what the term furlough meant, right? So you have to be kind of <laughs> a certain right. age to understand that. So it's kind of pack, unpacking that and, and saying, well, this is what, how it's different from a from a true layoff. But you know, the, our, the furlough, I think, from an aristocrat perspective, is we're being very again employee first and making sure you know we're picking up the health benefit cost for the employee if they had anything out of pocket. We are um, really offering a number of resources in in the learning space that, of course, will be all voluntary since they'll be on in unpaid status. But um, offering some learning options, offering some support, mental, physical well-being, offering support in learning, and making sure that we've got even some financial assistance and resources available. Being proactive and looking at the entire employee because what you want to do is keep them engaged so that they can come back. And we do plan to have our people that are going out on furlough come back. So it's that with our managers now, the communication pieces need to be you continue to stay engaged and check on how are you doing? How can I help? What resource or support can we provide you during this period of time? And that proactiveness of it's not a one size fits all and knowing your employees really well. To know that I might be struggling financially, I might be struggling just not having social interaction, I might have a different issue, but being able to really have um, an enterprise-wide strategy and resources, but then honing it down to the personal level, that's what's going to separate out, you know, in my opinion, the companies that are really going to have their brand be something that people talk about, you know, years to come. And and I, I thought about that a lot last week when we were engaging with employees and having conversations about, you know, we're going to need to put you on furlough for, for a month or two. And here's what that looks like. And, you know, really being intentional about this is a moment in time that this person will never forget. And that's a huge responsibility as a leader to make that conversation be as, you know, um, thoughtful and professional and compassionate as possible, you know, without being able to see into a crystal ball how long that time frame might be. And so it's it's that um, opportunity to just really think about if I was hearing this on the other side as an employee, how would I want to hear it? And why would I want to come back? What, what's going to attract me back? Yeah, they, thank you, Missy. That's 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 a um, uh, very different environment than than we've we've been in before, and 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 really loved your response and and, and how you're approaching it. That um, someone pretty early in the crisis told me that that was very unique about this crisis, just how personal it is, you know, for each of us because it, it affects all of us. Where you know you're in your home, I'm in my home. You know, it's not not business as usual. But just really curious about you know what kind of personal learnings you've had coming out of this. Yeah. I've had a couple of, of, I think, aha moments throughout this, and it's um, it's been good. You know, we're as leaders, we're constantly learning and constantly getting feedback and growing. What I learned first is aristocrat specifically is and lives the culture of people first. I mean, and, and it's not just lip service. It is absolutely fundamentally true. And our leaders were working literally 24-7 over the Easter holiday to make sure that we had the right approach in engaging with our people and having individual conversations about potential impact. So, and, and even just the resources continuing to put towards learning and support around well-being and all of that, that, you know, and not just sending a blanket email out. I think there's some things just from a company perspective, it's a company I'm proud to work for, but it's also that standard that I would never work for another company that didn't operate with that kind of core value. The second piece about the learnings for me is through the journey, and, and I was a leader, like I mentioned, during the financial crisis. I think at that point I approached it really, you know, you're an HR person and you're very matter of fact. This is what happened. This is what's going on. Here's, And while you do care about people personally, I think there was a part of me at a certain point where I was just um, putting my own feelings aside and not making it trying not to let the emotions or, the, or that come through. And what I've learned this time is about being vulnerable and as a leader showing people too that I'm nervous too, I'm scared too. This, this, is, this is scary and this is hard, and, but we're gonna get through it together. And I think having that vulnerability with your team and with leaders um, also helps other people on the other side feel like, oh, 
they're in the same boat I am. And there's that connection and that interconnectedness. I think those those learnings are really key. And then just the power of connection, right? The power of and, and the the resilience of the human spirit. I've seen so many things come through that, you know, you look at the silver lining in all of this and you think that would have never we've never would have had that opportunity. And so we've got to hear stories of employees about, you know, getting some time back with their kids and getting time to do some of these things that, you know, you're so busy and you're this and that and just taking a pause for a minute to really evaluate what's super important to you, why you get up in the morning, what your purpose is, how you connect with each other, how you add value. And so I, I think those were some of the other learnings for me is just the um, the amazing stories that you get to hear when you really spend time connecting with people. Yeah, the, the humanness of this whole crisis is 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 amazing. Um, I mean, it's it's really you know fascinating. So, kind of pivoting to like you know where you are now. Like, what what are your top areas of focus? You know, kind of going forward. Um, you know, where where are you focused as we kind of enter this you know next kind of phase of the of the crisis? Yeah, you know, for us now is just making sure that our leaders are well equipped with recovery, right? Not only just the support of employees, but how do we get back to business and how do we look at business differently? And so really the, the business portion of it is is paramount. Um, you know, the other pieces we're really looking at are the well-being. We want to take care of our employees. We want to take care of their needs. We want to make sure that they're feeling very supported. So there's a lot of emphasis around that. And learning is a critical portion of that in all of those areas to really look at those opportunities um, to either reskill, upskill, and or look at opportunities to develop and, and cross train into other areas that may are parts of our business may be impacted. But what can we do to retain that talent that we've worked so hard to develop? Yep. If that job's going away, just given no fault of anyone, how do we help and reskill and do that? And, and learning is the way to go, right? So our employees that are hungry and, and want to be invested in that space. So it's about pivoting to look at reskilling, upskilling the development, and then really making sure our leaders also now from a recovery place can start to, okay, how do we shift to look at doing things differently um, in the future? Great, thank you, thank you, Missy. Um, terrific, com terrific conversation. Loved the the. Um, uh, uh, all of all of the perspective that you were able to provide here, and well, thanks, you know, thank you very much. Well, thank you to Exec Online too. I just have been terrific partners with us and for us. All the resources that that that, that the teams provided for our leaders, being able to pivot quickly, has been super helpful. And so I just appreciate appreciate the partnership um, so much, and also the opportunity just to engage with you today, Adam. Thank you, Missy. All right, take care. Take care. Special thanks to Missy Hallett and to you for tuning in to this episode. Listen to more stories on demand by going to our website, execonline.com, HR Frontline, or follow Exec Online on LinkedIn for the latest updates. Interested in sharing your story? Email us at stories at execonline.com. Stay well and stay safe.